Thank you, and I am privileged and pleased to have the opportunity to speak to you in this forum. Boy, this is so 21st century, right? Right, right, right. Um, Unitarian minister by the name of Theodore Parker created this phrase that we now have attributed to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. He said, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice, all right? Couple that with what I'm going to claim that operates, that exists in each and every individual in the world. We all have what I'm going to call a moral instinct. Something that we were birthed with. Some kind of inner sense. Something beyond the tangible, yet something maybe even external, but yet internal. Something that's physical, something, something that prompts you to pay attention, to listen more clearly and more carefully. Something that, that causes you to sidestep danger. That thing that, see, that, that, that causes you to seize the moment. It's right now. It's that thing that's inside you, that thing you know, but you don't know how you know, but you know that you know it. Well, let me tell you a little bit about me. I'm a third-generation Pentecostal preacher. Yeah. <laughs> and on August 9th, 2014, a little over a year ago, my life changed. Got a text from a buddy of mine who said, and I quote, the crib is on fire, dot, 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 Ferguson. For you see, my life changed August 9th as I watched, like many of you watched, the images that came out of St. Louis. Struck, heartbroken, confused, but I had some extra. For you see, when I was born some five years ago, I was brought from Jewish hospital to the corner of McHenry and Hugo, 5601, my grandmama's house, in a town named Kinlock, Missouri. That town is just west of Ferguson. It is the place that I was nurtured in, the community that was the first African-American incorporated town in the state of Missouri. The images that came on CNN and MSNBC and all the major news networks were not just of a town. It was my home town. You all know what I mean? It was places West Florissant, streets and places and images. I know that quick trip that they torched down. I've been there before. And it was no surprise to me because I, like maybe many of the folk who frequent, frequented that particular quick trip, were treated disrespectfully. Four and a half hours, Michael Brown's body laid out in the middle of a Summer heat. Can I tell you my life changed? My mother called. My mother-in-law called. I got kinfolk that live in Ferguson. I got a brother-in-law, sister-in-law. I got nieces and nephews. I got one niece that, that it, it attended the school that Mike Brown graduated from just prior. In fact, I got one niece who went to school with Mike Brown's mother. August 9th, my life changed. Now, it's not that I haven't always, or at least for most of my adult life, I've been a preacher. <laughs> In fact, I don't know, 
what I was supposed to do other than that because it was prophesied. It was said of me that I was to be my granddaddy's successor, replacement. My granddaddy was the preacher. My grandmother was the musician. The blood of the musician and the preacher run it. They run, it runs in my veins. Guess what I do today? I'm a musician and a preacher. Yeah. I had a proclivity for social justice activism and being involved in the community. So, so I was standing on the front line in Ferguson face to face with the popo. I'm sorry, the police. And p police said, said, you know, we would do better if you outside agitators would just leave us alone. And I said, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, thank you, sir, but let me, let me correct something. I'm not an outside agitator. I'm from here. I know the back way from Ferguson into Kinlock. <laughs> I have traversed these streets. Third generation preacher. My family has served communities all around this region here. I, this time, am not the outside agitator. And I had a instinct to get home. I didn't need my mother and my mother-in-law to encourage me. I was already booking a ticket and figuring out how we could get home. We got home and we've been back and forth ever since. We've led groups from institutions that I work with back. We have been engaged with the young people there. They are some of my pookies and ray rays. They are some of my nieces and my nephews. They are some of my, I, some of the young people who are leading the movement there or, or I knew their mom and daddy before their mom and daddy knew each other. They call me Uncle John, Bishop Uncle John. My life changed August 9th, 2014. My spiritual teacher and guru said this. His name was Howard Thurman. He said, don't ask yourself what the world needs. He said, ask yourself what makes you come alive and go do that because what the world needs is for you to come alive. After serving, after preaching for nearly 40 years, I've been in ministry. My activism has reached across the aisle in communities that have been ravaged with HIV and AIDS, communities that have existed in poverty. My activism and ministry has existed and worked on the front line in reproductive justice. I have been engaged with my faith tradition around issues of equality for gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgendered people. I've been involved in the efforts around marriage equality. I been on the front line, black preacher, talking about some of the folk who exist on the margins. I was invited and participated in, in the first gang summit that preachers and, and, and community activists called in Kansas City two decades ago. And yet, August 9th, my life shifted again. My, one of my friends said, he was born again on the streets of Ferguson. Because what happened to me is that I understood afresh and anew the moral instinct inside me. That proclivity, that leaning toward what was right. I got prompted, ever been prompted, ever been moved, and you didn't really know why you were leaning to the, let me lean this way. What I want to, what I want to inspire in you, what I want to remind you of is that I think we all have those leanings. We all have these proclivities. We all have these promptings. And we've been learned out of them. We've been conditioned out of them. We've been told they don't matter. And yet, I believe 
they do matter. I believe we have this thing that draws us in to relationship with our insides. They, that thing speaks to us about what is right, about what is fair, about what justice means. I love Cornel West. Dr. Cornel West says, you know, justice is what love looks like in public. I wonder, wonder, have you been stirred and you don't really know why to do something that's connected to something bigger than yourself? Can you feel what I feel? This movement, since I'm a man of faith, I would call it the movement of the spirit. That is leaning us toward this moral universe, this arc. I want to know what makes you come alive. Howard Thurman, once again, he said this. He said, there is a sound of the genuine, the authentic that resides in each of us. And it calls us, he, he said it like this, there's something in every one of us that awaits and listens for the sound of the genuine in itself. It is the only true God you will ever have. And if you cannot hear it, he says, you will all of your life spend your, li your days on the ends of the strings that someone else pulls. What makes you come alive. Where are your muscles? Start to exercise your own moral instinctual muscles. Because it is at that place the world that we now live in all the issues and ills and the problems and circumstances and situations everything that we think is wrong didn't just happen on us. Oops, there it is. No, we created it. So my contention is, if we created it, how come we can't create another, a new, a fresh? How come we can't tear it down and start over? I love do-overs. Or a spell check. <laughs> Create it for me. Wonder, wonder. Can you feel your instinct, your rightness, the right thing? I believe we are all created to be, to do, to achieve, to aspire, to do more. I want you, like Howard Thurman suggested, to come alive. Because when you come alive, when you get set on fire, we'll change this world. Thank you for listening. Peace.